What stands Lagos, you know, distinct from other places is that Lagos comes with its own peculiar energy. And it's that energy that we really want to show the world. The, the, the story of Lagos is, is more or less the story of the black race. Beyond the fact that Lagos is a cosmopolitan state right now, Lagos boasts of the real rich culture and heritage of Nigeria. Yet it's not as old as you have with, with other mega cities, but we just think that the brand Lagos is emerging in a way that the world has to take note of what is happening in Lagos. Lagos State in the last two and a half years has remained the beacon of hope in the firmament of Nigeria's democratic experience. It has been reinforced as a true land of opportunity and a definition of what is possible when resources and ideas are married imaginative to build a land of our dreams. Tremendous transformation has taken place. Mr. Kimumi Ambodi, armed with visionary leadership and clear perception of what Lagosians want is impacting such areas as infrastructural development, fiscal stability, economic, growth, security, environmental stability, education, tourism, sports, and recreation. Aside from renovating over 322 roads in an expanded road maintenance program, the administration has embarked on significant landscape defining road construction projects. They include Jubilee flyovers at Abu Leba and Aja to address the challenge of traffic log jam. The construction of more than 15 laybys has served to reduce travel time along the Ogudo Bega Obalinde axis. The impact on the state's economy is indeed very significant. To ensure public safety and security, Governor Kiyomi Ambode presented 125 KVA power generating sets and 20 patrol vehicles were handed over to the police and the Rapid Response Code, respectively, to further boost security services and scale up monitoring and surveillance capabilities of relevant agencies. The Neighborhood Safety Corps was launched on Monday, 27 March 2017 to assist the police and other security agencies to maintain law and order in the state. Similarly, Governor Kiyomi Ambodi announced an increment in debt insurance benefit for police officers who die in active service to the state to 10 million naira, raising the stake of debt insurance policy from 1 million to rank and file and 2 million to senior officers to 10 million. The dispensation of justice was further assisted with the commissioning of the DNA Forensic Laboratory Center. The DNA Forensic Laboratory Center was commissioned by Governor Akiomi Ambodi. This is to assist in resolving paternal and maternal ancestry DNA issues, provide the police, prosecutors, defense attorneys, and private citizens with crime scene processing services and serological screening 
amongst others. Health is a fundamental right that needs to be nurtured and supported for economic growth and development. Fully committed to sustaining a vibrant health care to its teeming populace and keeping with this avowed commitment, the administration commenced free health services under the Health Mission Program. The exercise kicked off at Ojo local government and was taken to eight local government and local council development areas of the state. Over one million patients were attended to for various screening and further referral. In addition, there was massive upgrading, renovation, full equipping and commissioning of primary health care centers across the state. Some of those rehabilitated are the Unico Health Center, Bola Ahmed Health Center, Aburu, and the Unibungbo Primary Health Care, among others. Having realized that youth unemployment is a critical element in the process of growth and development, the state government went all out in order to solve this problem, from training youths and women in various skills to disbursing about 1 billion naira to 700 and five micro and small medium entrepreneurs, the state government has improved the standard of living as well as generated wealth for families to the benefit of the state and the nation as a whole. His Excellency also presented certificates to 1,500 artisans and traders in the state who were retrained on modular employability program. These was part of efforts to scale up the informal sector with a view to making members meet up with current realities. It is also to enhance productivity in a total of 24 trades, including entrepreneurship, computer appreciation, writing business proposals, among others. These beneficiaries were drawn from various associations under the auspices of the Lagos State Council of Tradesmen and Artisans last quarter. As part of efforts of this administration to provide the very best of education for every child at all levels, the administration carried out several commissioning of blocks of classrooms across the state. These blocks of classrooms are built with modern office spaces, toilets, school halls, firms, gate houses, and food shops for vendors. Over 60 blocks of classrooms were commissioned across the state to improve and better the education sector. Some of these are the Christ Church Cathedral Primary School, Broad Street, Community Primary School, Abuleko, Ijede, Community Primary School, Adoikosi Ekpe, and Odu Abore Primary School, Motion Lagos. What you have mentioned is the newly rehabilitated Ultra Modern Herbert Macaulay Library, Yaba. This new library and schools will complement the current push by the administration to revamp public schools through massive rehabilitation and reconstruction of dilapidated structures. Governor Kiyomi is indeed poised at making Lagos a one-stop tourist attraction with about 19 new monuments simultaneously constructed in different areas across the state. An ultra-modern recreational park in honor of three former governors of the state, Brigadier Mubalaji Johnson retired, Alhaji Latif Jakande, and Senator Bola Ahmed Chinumbu was commissioned in Alausa, Ikeja. The governor also renovated and commissioned the fountain at Tinumbu Square, unveiled the statue of the first crown king of Lagos, King Ado, and the legendary Prince Olofi Atekoye, referred to as the first migrant from Ileife, the cradle of Yorubas, to settle in Lagos. Also, the iconic statue of the late sage and nationalist Chief Jeremiah Bafemi Awolo were commissioned to make Lagos a place for all. There was the signing of the Sanitation and Environmental Bill into law on Wednesday, 1st March 2017. With the new law comes the Cleaner Lagos Initiative by which licensed private sector operators will handle commercial wastes. Environmental sanitation co-workers were also retrained, recated and re-equipped to tackle the state's environmental challenge and turn around the management of solid waste for greater benefits to the people. 
As part of its commitment to run an all-inclusive government, Governor Kiumi Ambode on 9th August 2017 presented assistive devices, vehicles, and empowerment grants to persons living with disabilities. This is aimed at ensuring that no person, regardless of his physical challenge, will be left behind in the state. Since the administration believes in ability in disability, about 250 of persons living with disabilities were employed into the state civil service in September 2017. This gesture was aimed at giving them economic and financial independence. More of this gesture is assured in the new year 2018. These projects, programs and initiatives, no doubt, depict the unique approach of the governor to governance. It is a continuous effort to move the states forward. The pace at which the administration has breaking new grounds, the numerous investment opportunities, and the spirit of commitment in turning the state into a tourist hub has no doubt strengthened and repositioned the state. Poised to extend the boundaries of services available to Lagosians, the Ambodia administration put together a trillion naira budget for year 2018. At the heart of this ambitious budget is the need for all hands to be on deck to generate needed fund for the implementation of more people-oriented programs and projects. It's a Siwaju Ikmeleku, Lojawalugu.